Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I welcome everyone to another session of uh, Ramadan spiritual treats. It's a special program organized by Islam, International Student of Islamic Psychology, the Nigeria chapter, for specifically tailored for Ramadan. This is um, an exposition of the work of uh, Sheikh Ibn Atta'ila al Askandari, a well known um scholar of, of the blessed memory who lives around Egypt and he has compiled some aphorisms that will help uh, humans or Muslim believers especially on how to deal with their understanding of their Lord and themselves uh, basically on Tezkiah and uh, it covers a lot of other topics but this comes in like snippets um, because you know uh, why this is important in our time is because we are caught up with distractions and we are not able to deal with reading a long articles or listening to long talks. So this is apt in the sense that they are uh, short messages, but kind of uh, has lots of messages in them. So alhamdulillah. And um, we have collaborated with Dr. Mohamed Muridian uh, Olodo Ashafi, who has been treating this particular work. Aphorisms is about 240 or thereabouts, and he has started in the last year Ramadan. And we are collaborating with him this year to uh, continue the explanation weekends. So of course, after Ramadan, if you wish to continue with him via his uh, YouTube and Zoom, inshallah will be sharing that link for us to continue the session with him. So a quick, uh, before we start, let us just start uh, recite the opening chapter of the Quran together. Audhu billahi minash shaitan irajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman rahim. Maliki yamuddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Idina sirat al-mustakim. Sirat al-ladhina niyamta alihim. Ghayri al-magdubi alihim wa al-tali. Ameen. Naam. So in, we had, we've had uh, four sessions where we treated uh, aphorism 88, 89, 95, and 96. And you can watch those previous clips via the links uh, that we've shared, uh, inshallah, to, to catch up with the previous sessions. So I'll give the floor to Dr. Muhammad to uh, start the session. Bismillah, Dr. You are currently muted. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم البصير من الشيطان الرجيم من حمسه ونفخه ونفثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا وسندنا وغوثنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآله وصحبه أجمعين آمين وبعد الإخوة الأعزاء الأحبة في الله والمستمعين الأفاضل الكريم الأعزاء السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وإثام الله سبحانه وتعالى first and foremost for he is the only worthy of all appreciations and adorations we thank him we adore him, we glorify him in all ramifications, and uh, we do ask him to further show his mercies and blessings and bounties upon the noble prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his households, companions, and followers until the day of reckoning and beyond. I mean, uh, we welcome ourselves again to the fifth session of uh, the Ramadan spiritual treats, uh, living in the garden of the Hikam of Ibn Atta Eli Asakandari, uh, organized by the International Student of Islamic Psychology, uh, Nigeria chapter. So we welcome ourselves uh, back to this uh, continuation 
we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it as an act of ibadah for all of us in this glorious month of Ramadan and beyond. I mean, um, um, and uh, specifically uh, the uh, the determination of uh, our brother Abdul Aziz has been so tremendous in this. So I know it's uh, tight schedules and uh, those of his team also, but despite that, and uh, you still have time for this. And to be honest with you, this kind of discussion is not a discussion that draws or attracts crowd. So because it is, uh, it is uh, actually meant to be executive discussion. And uh, it started in the class with the students and uh, it came online uh, on request for last year Ramadan and uh, with encouragement, we continue it as a uh, Friday uh, delicacies afterward to so before continuing it for this Ramadan. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the longevity of life and blessing to, uh, to, to witness the end of it, inshallah, hopefully Amen. before the next Ramadan or by the next, Ramadan, next year Ramadan, it will finish. So the book, for those who are joining for the first time, so the Hikam Ibn Atta'illah consists of 246 aphorisms. Okay, uh, some of them are short and uh, some are uh, unnecessarily uh, connected to each other and some are directly or indirectly related to each other. So some are repetition and continuation of the others and so on and so forth. And each of them is connected to at least one verse of the Quran. So that is the essence of it. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless uh, uh, Sheikh Ibn Atalla al Sakandari and his shuyuks and uh, Sheikh Abdul Majid al Sharnobi who passed the commentary onto us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of them sukkah in their grief. I mean, now. Uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think ISIP will share this uh, later. So these are the correspondence just for those who wish to follow up later, inshallah, after the series of, Ramad uh, of the Ramadan treats, inshallah. So um, hopefully this is the, the third week of Ramadan already. And uh, by next week, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we will be bidding Ramadan uh, farewell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity of witnessing many, many more of it in a life and sound health. Now, uh, the, the title or the, uh, the focus of today's discussion is uh, Phenomena, Illuminations, and Spiritual Illumination. And uh, in other words, material illumination and uh, divine illumination. So in, all, in a clearer version, so the, uh, the cosmological, cosmological lights and the heartier lights, the, heart, the lights in the heart of uh, the knower of the truth. So, and the theme is uh, physical lights, uh, uh, the the setting of physical lights and the uh, the everlastingness of spiritual light. So that is what the aphorism number one hundred and four is uh, about. So we are treating Insha Allah to the aphorism number one hundred and four, and tomorrow Insha Allah we hope to treat aphorism number one hundred and six, uh, because the reason is uh, we have treated aphorism number one hundred and three earlier today on the normal session. And uh, tomorrow uh, by 5 p.m. here, we are going to treat aphorism number 104. So then for the for our session here with ISIP, we're going to treat aphorism number 106 and so on, inshallah. So, so the aphorism number 104 is about uh, uh, around the, the theme, uh, phenomena versus spiritual illuminations. Now, in relation to that, uh, 
there are several verses of the Quran that uh, talks about uh, spiritual guidance and uh, physical guidance. The physical guidance versus spiritual guidance. Or uh, in other words, so the material, uh, material signals leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence and the divine spiritual order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leading to himself. Now we can see we, uh, many, many verses of this in Quran, but uh, specifically, so we like to, uh, to treat it in light of uh, Sayyiduna Ibrahim, Abul Iman, Aladhi uh, Saman and Muslimin. So in the narration, when he started at the beginning of seeking for guidance, when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, Bada a'ud billahi minash shaytani rajim. Wa idhi kola Ibrahimu li abihi adhara atatakhidhu asunaman aliatan inni araka wa kawma kafidhu lalim mubin. Wa kathalika nuriya Ibrahimu malakuta samawatu wal arda wa liyakuna minal mukaneen. فلما جن عليه الليل راى كوكبا قال هذا ربي فلما افل قال لا احب الافلين فلما راى القمر بازغا قال هذا ربي فلما افل قال لا ان لم يهدني ربي لا اكونن من القوم الضالين فلما راى الشمس بازغه قال هذا ربي هذا اكبر فلما افلت قال يا قوم اني بريء مما تشركون اني وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والارض حنيفا وما انا من المشركين وحاجه قومه قال Atuhajuni fillahi wa kod hadani wa la akhafu ma tushrikuna bihi illa an yashaa rabbi shay'a wasi'a rabbi kulla shay'in ilma afala tatadhakkaroon wa kayfa akhafu ma ashraktum wa la takhafuna annakum ashraktum billahi ma lam yunazzil bihi alaykum sultana فأي الفريقين أحق بالأمن إن كنتم تعلمون؟ okay. الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم فأولئك الذين so it continue like, uh, like, like that in سورة الأنعام. now uh, if we notice uh, uh, well I I I'm, I'm, I believe that the meaning of the of the ayahs are very uh, self-evident and clear to every one of us, but specifically, just in some, uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, in seeking in the beginning of uh, guidance, so he was, uh, of course, it is not rightful, rightful to us to say that any of the anbiya Allah, he were confused, but in the spiritual realm, so he seemed to, uh, to have been confused of uh, what is God uh, specifically? Who is God specifically? And how to arrive at him? So what can be taken as God? So uh, as common uh, in, during his era and among his people, so he did not take uh, all those let, onza, all this. He didn't count them as God. So rather, he looked, uh, he looked upward. Okay, rather than looking downward, outward. So he looked heavenward, upward, okay, uh, thinking that uh, the Lord, who is the supervisor of everything, would have to be above the uh, the old creature and the old creation. So he cannot be in this uh, temporal, uh, temporal material world. So that is why he looked up. And in looking up, there were three specific things that he considered as big and as above everything that are more powerful than those on the heart. The first are the stars, the constellation, the, the, the constellation. So uh, he, uh, in the night, so there were two signs in the night. The number one is the constellation, number two is the moon, okay? So then during the day, 
So there was also all of all of all of the three are in the sky. They were upward and heavenward. So in, in, in during the, the day, so he saw, uh, he counted and took uh, taking uh, the the sun, the solar system. Let's say, okay. So the other one, lunar system. So as Lord, as the group uh, of of God. So, uh, but here again, when he saw the constellation, he believed that they should be constant and they should be permanent. They should be there uh, for everyone to witness and to see and to, so that they can take care of uh, everything on the heart. But to his surprise, uh, those constellations, they set in. So then he said, no, uh, I cannot believe in things that go and come. Okay, that is when he, re he responded in verse number 76. I do not love anything that sets and rises. I don't like that cannot be my God. So that is not stable. So the, my, the Lord God must be stable. He cannot change. It cannot grow young or older. So this cow cup can never be the Lord. Then he looked up to uh, the consideration of the moon, then the lunar system. Again, uh, he noticed by study and philosophically, he noticed that the comor, the, the moon itself, did not start at as moon. It started as a crescent, starting from zero age, age one, day one, day two, day three, growing to become full moon at 13, 14, 15th of the day. And 16, 17, it starts diminishing again until it goes to 28, 29 to go and set, only to start again from the from the small and the beginning. Then he said, no. I'm really seeking for God. And that God must be able to guide me. Otherwise, I'm going to belong to these people, this group of, uh, of ignorant and lost people. Then... Uh, he, that was a prayer, and that was his hope. Now, when he woke up in the morning, so another thing came, uh, looking up again, he saw a sham, so he saw the sun. But, uh, no, this, uh, this, is, this is bigger, so this is hotter, this is more powerful, so this must be great uh, God that has pow more power than the previous two. But again, falamma afalat kola ya komi in nibari umimma to shrikun. So when the sun also during the uh, after Maghrib or towards Maghrib also went to set down, he said in declaration of his faith that, oh, my people, I am free and I'm tired of all these things that you associate in partnership with God. There must be a God that does not change. All these things that you are doing, they are not what you call, what you think they are. In wajah to wajihirali ledi fatura samawat wal addu hanifan. I direct solely my face directly towards the ones who has uh, innovated, okay, single-handedly, divinely created the heavens and the heart purely, and I am not of those who associate any partner with them. Now, there are two statements by uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam here. Number one in 76, la uhibbul afilin. Number two in 79. Uh, uh, okay. So this, uh, the, the number one is like saying, La ilaha illallah de, la uhibbul afilin. La ilaha, okay. Then number, number 79, so it's the complete, co completion or the declaration that there is no one except Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that cannot be associated any partner to. Now, in relevance to the aspiration uh, number one hundred and uh, one hundred and four in question, uh, every other thing, every other thing belongs to the group of al afilin the group of the setting and rising things. Okay, now there are two types of lights. A light that sets and rises, that is not constant. And another one is a light that is constant, okay, and everlasting, that does not set. There is no setting time for him. There is no 
no no no rising time. It is all it is always there. So the first one is the light that illuminates the quote the creature, the cosmological effects. So the second one is that of the divine light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us in the on the heart of the Arifin, of the Gnostics, of those who are uh, of the knowers of the truth and the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these two uh, illuminations are the focuses, are the focus of uh, aphorism number 104 of Ibn Atta'illah as secondaries aphorism. And there so uh, I present it as presented in the book. It reads, Anaros Zawahiro bi anwari atharihi wa anaros sarairo bi anwari awsafihi li ajli dhalika afalat anwaru zawahiri wa lam ta'ful anwaru alqulubi was sarairi wa li dhalika qila inna shamsa an-nahari taghrubu bil layli wa shamsu alqulubi laysat taghibu the aphorism once again, Anaro Zawahiro bi anewari atharihi, wa anaro sarairo bi anewari awsafihi, li ajli dhalika afalat anwaru zawahiri, wa lam ta'ful anwaru l-kulubi wa sarair. So that is where the aphorism stops at. The aphorism stops there. So what you have there is a quotation, a poetic quotation from Ibn Atta Illa as secondary from another book. Inna shamsa nahari taghrubu bil layli wa shamsul kulubi laysat taghribu. But the aphorism is anawra zawahira bi anwari atharihi anawra zawahira bi anwari anwari atharihi wa anawra sarairo bi anwari awsafihi now, for the benefit of those who are Arabic com uh, competence, now, there are several words here in this aphorism that demand clarification before going to the literal translation. Now, anara there, so it is taken from anur, from light, okay, anara, so like lightening something, brightening something. As Zawahir here, so that is the plural form of Azohir. Now, Azohir here, uh, of course, some uh, things that are phenomena, things that are seen and physical. But here, what it means by Azohir here are the uh, the physical uh, phenomena, the materialities, so the physical and natural world, creations around us. Okay, Anwaru Atharihi. So what it means by Anwaru Atharihi. So the light of his traits, the light of his creatures. So like number one, the light of the comma, the light of the moon. Number two, the light of the constellations. Then number three, the light of the sun. Okay, the light coming from the solar system, from the lunar system, and the earth, and all the constellations. So like and 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 any other things that emits light. So this is the group of Anwari Atharihi. Now, an asaro iro, asaro iro. It is the opposite of azawahiro. Saro iro, uh, the plural form of asir, asiru, meaning the secrets, to so the hidden, the hidden creation. Okay, hidden creation. Now, what it means by hidden creation are the uh, the creation of Allah that cannot be seen by any of the five senses okay uh, specifically in this aphorism it is meant to be the heart of uh the heart of man okay the heart of man which is the small world the, the small cosmology the small spiritual cosmological uh creature and worry our that is the light of the attributes of allah the light of the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and also another word that uh, demands attention there is afalat. So that one we have explained it through the ayah. Falama uh, afalat kola la uhibul afilin. Okay. And waru zawahir, we have also explained that also. 
uh, walam ta'ful also, that is the same thing. And warul kulub was sarair, so that is the light of the heart and the spiritual events. Now, literally, what this aphorism means that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lighting up the creature entirely, the physical creature, with his physical illumination, with the stars, with the light emitted by the, by the moon, and the light that comes from the sunlight. And during the daybreak, and of course with the eyes of people also, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brightened and make people to study and realize things through these material illuminations. That is number one. Now, on the other side, for the spiritual illumination, Anarosaroiro, he has brightened the spiritual realm also. That is the heart of the Gnostics, the heart of those who are close to him. He has also brightened and lightened it up. Be anwari awsofihi with the lights of his own attributes. Okay, by saying, for example, example of that we can see in Surah to Nur, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah nuru samawati wal ardi. Okay, mathalu nuri he comes cutting fiha and so on and so forth. So he has specifically brightened up the heart of his beloveds with the lights of his attributes. What are the lights of attributes? The lights of his, of his hidayah. So by this, when the light of the, when the cosmological light that, but that brightens the cosmological effects set in and goes down to so the light of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is showered on the heart of this of his, of his beloved, do not set and do not go away. It doesn't fade away. So afalat and So as such, the light and brightness of the physical phenomena afalat, it sets. Okay, most cases when it is daylight, so there will be light. And when it is uh, night, so the light will go. But the lights of the heart of the of the of the, of the beloved of Allah and the, the spiritual light that is shows us on them, it doesn't set, whether it is in daylight or whether it is in, in the night. So it doesn't go. So that is where the aphorism stops. And uh, to buttress that, they say, in the sun of the of the day or the daylight brightness, the daylight sun sets when it is night. But the sun of the heart, the sun that shows us light rays on the heart of the beloved of Allah does not set and does not go. Uh, and it doesn't fade away. So that is the aphorism number 104. Now, uh, literally, uh, it, it, it reads, he has, he has illumined or illumined outward appearances, that is the physical phenomena, with the lights of his created vestiges, and illumined in, inmost hearts or innermost hearts with the lights of his attributes. So this is why the lights of created vestiges set at night, but the lights of hearts and inmost souls never set. And why? It has been said, the daytime sun goes down at night, but the sun of Gnostic hearts never goes down. So in other words, he has illuminated the exteriors with the light of his actions and illuminated the interiors with the light of his attributes. For this reason, the external lights fade and set, while the lights of the heart and innermost beings do not set. So it is said, Again, in quotation of the of the poetry, the sun of the daylight sets at night, but the sun of their heart does not fade away. So that that is a, a literally uh, the the meaning of the aphorism. Now let's go into Sheikh Abdul Majid Asharnobi. What he says, okay, in his interpretation, he says, 
Anna who subhana who and anaro as the wahir. So just to understand what is as the wahir, he says it is al mukawanat. Al mukawanat that is created sin. Created sins. Created sins is what we call uh, philosophically as creature. So there is a difference between al kain and al mukawan. Al kain is creator, uh, ending with T O R. And the Mukawanat are the creatures ending with T U R E S. Okay, so uh, as Zawahir here, yeah, so it is uh, synonymous to Al Mukawanat, so the creatures. So uh, Sheikh Abdul Majid says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brightened the creature with the lights of Al Kawakib, the light of the constellations the stars, the light of the suns, the light of the moon, which are traces of its power and magnificent. So when we, when we see, when we look at the creator, we see the reflection of the tree, reflection of the constellation, the reflection of the solar, the uh, solar system and also the, re the reflection of the lunar system. So bidalika and nor. So through that, we use them to, for our benefit. Okay, for things that benefit us. So then we use them also to uh, to avoid harmful effects of them. So what he knows, what he calls Sarair here, so according to Sheikh Abdul Majib Asharunubi, he says, he means Bawati no So the innermost side, the innermost part of the heart of the Gnostics. So he has brightened them up, Bi Anwari al Sofihi, with the lights of his attributes. So what he calls Anwari al Sofihi here is Onlumil Erifaniya. Well, as Rory Robania, the uh, the pre uh, the presential knowledges, the presential knowledges. Otherwise, the uh, in other words called as Elmul Laduniya, the the presential knowledge and also the divine secrets, uh, secretual knowledge of Allah. So Lida Lika Afalat Ayga but Anwaru Zawahir. So as such. So the lights connected to the physical phenomena, they go and set. So when it is night, the light, the sunlight will set. When it is daylight, the, 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 uh, the reflection, the, the light that is reflected through the moon will also fade away. Because those lights are generated from things that are not permanent. So, lamta full be doomed alpha, yani, the lamta give an warul kulub was all, but on the other side, so the lights illuminate on the heart of the Gnostics, and the secrets that is put daring do not set. Likeoni ha nash atum anni sifatil kodima, because they are illuminated through the ancient attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so those are the, uh, I think, uh, some of the interpretations from the, uh, from Sheikh uh, Abdul Majid Asharnubi. Okay, and uh, with regards to the, to uh, connecting the aphorism with the, uh, with the narration of uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Sheikh Abdul, Abdul Majid also mentioned it here, he says, so as such, when man is able to reject and distance himself from all those phenomena uh, lights and imbibe in the divine light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that will be the moment when a man or a person will be assured that he is closer to the level of Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam when he uh, when he convincedly said la uhibbul afilina i do not like anything that sets and rises so i do not like a god 
that is not permanent. So when we come to this stage, then we will be sure of what of having the presential knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So and um, so I think uh, that is the uh, the the uh, the summary of what Sheikh Abdul Majid uh, Sharnobi uh, wants to tell us. Now and the uh, in conceptually just uh, running to conclusion. So the lights of the exteriors are the things perceived by the uh, physical senses and the movements of the person's body. And the lights of the interiors are the, are the divine knowledges, just to, uh, to give us the, what is meant by Anwar Zawahir and Anwar Sarair. Okay, so Anwar Zawahir is what is called the lights of the exteriors. So uh, why the other one is the lights of the interiors. Okay, and the lights of the interiors are the divine knowledge, subtle spiritual sensations and understandings that the internal of the servant experiences. So the internal of servant here are the uh, the the lights that are showed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside the heart of our, of his beloved. Thus, the external lights are connected with the time-bound physical actions of Allah. Okay, the physical action of Allah that reflects through uh, the constellation through the lunar system, through the solar system. And these are the spiritual meanings and subtleties contained within these physical forms. And the internal lights are connected with the timeless attributes of Allah because Allah is timeless, limitless. So so is so are its attributes also. So if Allah in his infinite mercy show is his, uh, his light upon the heart of a person of a servant, so that light is limitless and countless and it cannot be confined to anything, to any time. So this is due to the difference of the two realms concerning their time bound and timeless nature. So their dependence and independence. So the uh, the, uh, the the external, the, the lights of the exterior, so it is dependence on the light of interior, okay? Because without the interior light, there is nothing to witness in the exterior light, okay? So wherefore, the interior one is independence because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, uh, who is the source, is uh, as a, an independent existence. So their, their perishing and permanent nature that the author mentions that the lights of the exteriors fade away and the lights of the interior remains. So then uh, the author quoted a famous verse of poetry whose meaning is clear and the preceding verse is the shining of, of sun of he who loves uh, his Lord rises in the night and also gives light and as such it never sets. So this is the conceptual message and uh, uh, meaning of the aphorism. So uh, the, the very simply put, uh, we are encouraged here uh, to, uh, to always connect ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose dominion remains forever. And uh, we should try as much as we could to distance our mind and soul away from the worldly and temporal materials. So that uh, those are the two uh, uh, the, the conclusive meaning therein. Now, for the uh, night number 20 supplications, uh, it is uh, Subhanaka anta Allahu al haqqul mubin. Subhanaka anta Allahu al haqqul mubin. Subhanaka anta Allahu al haqqul mubin. So we can see uh, these are the combination of two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, al haqq and number two, Al-Mubin. So uh, uh, it, it, the numbers given there are just, uh, uh, they are just uh, advisor, so they are not permanent, so it could be more. So 70, 77, 170, so that is according to the book in which it is found. So, but it could be more, okay? And if we don't have time to do it much, so it could be less also. So what is important is the intention that we use to, to do it. So it can be done in any position, but it is better while in purity, in ablution. And after observing at least two rakas, 
and uh, with uh, Fatha and Surat al uh, Surat al Kafirun in the first, Fatha and Surat al Ikhlas in the second. So two two rakat is okay, four is okay, six is okay. The more, the better. Inshallah. So the meaning of the of the of the name is Subhanaka anta Allahu al Hakul Mubin. A uh, glory be to you, Allah, the truth and the manifest. So uh, any of the name of Allah that we choose to recite, so they all bring us, uh, the, 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 the major aim is to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in addition to that purpose, so the person who recites this always will be known and famous for honesty and sincerity. Because Allah is al-haqqu al mubin so he would inspire such a person uh, uh, honesty and sincerity. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the, bl the blessings during in that in those names. Now, uh, in conclusion, so through uh, using a natural, uh, natural creature to solve natural uh, diseases. So uh, there are just, uh, this is just a very simple one, treating sores or wounds on the, on the any part of the body, okay? Uh, it is uh, getting uh, the pap karika papaya leaf, fresh leaf of papa to one, two. Uh, we grind it quickly without adding any water. So then we apply it directly on the on the open wound, on the on the place where there is wound or when there where there is sore. So then get another part, another fresh leaf of papa. So use it to cover that place after putting the grinded the the grind the grinded uh, the grinded mixture so uh, cover it with another leaf of uh, of papaya then find something to tie it or to cover it so that can be repeated uh, twice a day or every day so be easy so the wound will heal off without uh, attracting any infection or any uh, other any much pain inshallah so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, ask, to accept all of this as an act of ibadah and grant us more hidayah and tawfiq. Uh, thank you all. So we, with this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jazakumullah uh, khairan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam, Thank you very much once again, as usual. It's very uh, interesting. On uh, the comparison of the light of the, the, the obvious light and that of the inner light. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Allah grant us the inner light, which is the most important. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has inner light will be able to enlighten the everywhere. And we hope that uh, not much our mind with that of uh, his attribute. Mm -hmm. So, with this, we we'll close the session. We're already over time. So, I'll say subhanakallahu wa bihamdi. And I shall do Allah in a in a step of the way. Subhanahu wa bihamdi. Subhanahu wa bihamdi. Subhanahu wa bihamdi. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah.